My name's Chris Glazier. I'm with Tesco Controls. Uh, this is the training for the Montclair lift station. Uh, it's very similar to the Philadelphia lift station. Uh, we have three, three pumps trying to maintain a level. Uh, we have two PLCs, uh, one as a primary and one as a backup. Uh, that's pretty much where the similarities do end though. Uh, the Montclair has three VFDs instead of two in a fixed, fixed speed. Uh, it also does not have any valves that are controlled by the PLC, no ferric in injection, so it's a lot simpler. Uh, and the uh, third exception is the uh, backup PLC does not control the speed of the VFDs. So that's, that's the big differences. There's slightly others, uh, but those are the big ones. Uh, instead of uh, two wet well levels being split into two different signals uh, at, for two, two different racks at uh, Philadelphia, there's just two signals at each PLC. That means uh, when you look at the operator interface that we'll show later, there'll only be one level that you see instead of having two and you don't know which one's controlling. Uh, there's only one I in input output rack so there's no need to split between, uh, have both signals sent. The OITs, uh, they're designed again with the uh, high performance graphics. Uh, that means it's not red and green for running in the idle or the other way around. Uh, it's white for running and dark gray for idle. Uh, if, you're, if it's not the controlling PLC, you'll actually see it turn blue instead of white and we'll go over that difference later. Uh, the idea is to kind of focus your attention to anything that's an issue. You know, if there's an alarm, you'll see something red uh, and that, that'll stand out for you. Uh, it'll blink if it's red and you haven't acknowledged it yet. Uh, there's also, uh, as we'll go over, there's uh, warnings that there's a high, high level or more importantly, a gas monitoring uh, detected. So at PLC1, there's your three VFDs that are controlled. There's also your high beacon. Uh, there's two, two lights. There's one in the downstairs stairwell, and there's one on top of the PLC cabinet. Uh, we are also looking at trying to do a horn within the PLC cabinet. Uh, and there's a, a fault light right on, on the outside of the cabinet Basically, if the PLC stops running for whatever reason, that light will come on. That will tell you that PLC 1 is essentially dead and you're controlling on PLC 2. Uh, the equipment available for PLC 2 is the VFD pumps, uh, but except that they only start and stop. There's no uh, you know, speed control, uh, they're, so their control is slightly different. And uh, there's a PLC2 in control output that goes to PLC1 so that <coughs> one, while that a is active, PLC1 will not attempt to control the pumps. That way we're not trying to adjust speed in one and control by the other with the second. Uh, we monitor uh, additional equipment. The air conditioning functions like most air conditionings. There's a sensor inside each VFD cabinet. When it gets too hot, the air conditioning turns on. Uh, it's a lot simpler. Uh, it's all controlled through the air conditioning. There's two units that could turn on and uh, each unit has a supply and return damper. Uh, we do monitor all those. We look for alarms. We look for open closed for each damper. There's the uh, exhaust fan that should be running. Uh, that's not controlled by the PLC, but it's monitored. That should be always running. Uh, right now, it's not. They're still working on the wiring with that. It also has a failure associated with it, and that alarm will come on. If it's not running, there will also be a, an alarm. The uh, ATS, we monitor the normal position and on generator. Uh, we monitor the generator if it's running. Uh, we monitor the PLC2 in control. 
the wet well levels. We're looking, there's two levels, they're right outside, they're really close to each other because it's a small wet well, but it's a, they're to be used as duplicates. You know, if one fails, it automatically goes to the second one. Uh, you have your station discharge pressure. There's a single discharge pressure. Uh, each pump has its own pressure switch, which will shut it down on high pressure, but there's a single discharge uh, pressure transmitter. Uh, each pump has its own flow, so there's three flow meters instead of one for the station. That changed from uh, this upgrade. I do display the total flow, so you'll be able to document everything as station flow like you did before. Just keep in mind that there's three flow meters now instead of one. Uh, you, you have your pump room gas monitoring. There's the oxygen level, so we detect a high oxygen or a low oxygen. Uh, there's the hydrogen sulfide. We detect a high hydrogen sulfide, and then there's a methane or combustible gas, and we also detect a high and high high methane or combustible gas. If any of the high high, high high, or on oxygen low low, or high high alarms are active, or if the sensor fails, the beacon will come on, uh, will generate on the operator interface the warning that, that's there. Uh, the beacons, it's bright enough to, if you're downstairs, you'll, you'll notice it flashing. Uh, we did ex uh, There's a temperature within PLC1 cabinet that we monitor. Uh, we do monitor power, the power monitor for the whole switch gear. Uh, we'll record information for that. And finally, we, we uh, record information from the VFD pumps as far as power related. So that's everything at PLC 1. Obviously, there's a lot more there than at PLC 2. Uh, any questions about any of the equipment we monitor? Yeah. With uh, PLC 2, uh, again, we look at the ATS in emergency position, and we look at the uh, AC power uh, to let us know if there was a power fail, and uh, if PLC 1 is active. Again, if PLC 1 turns off for whatever reason, PLC 2 will instantly take over. It's not waiting for a high alarm like at uh, Philadelphia. So the alarms, so we've got alarms for e all the equipment up there, the level, the flow, pressure, temperature, we're looking at high and low. Uh, the gas, we've got a lot of power alarms that we're looking at, power supplies within the cabinet, uh, communication failure, uh, we have your phase and voltage failure, and the uh, panel intrusion. Uh, we don't monitor the building intrusion, uh, that you have your alarm security for that. Okay, so what we're going to cover today also is the uh, we're going to show actual screens from PLC one of you know live data that was you know captured uh, when I, I took the screenshots. There's an overview screen. There's the pump screen, which is uh, the most common screen that we leave it on. Uh, you guys just prefer seeing the pumps and all the data on that screen. Uh, within the pump screen, there's subscreens to look at each individual pump, uh, the control set points, PID tuning, and the trend screen. Uh, the HVAC, uh, that's really simple. It's all the information that's on the is available on the overview screen, but it's also redone here, uh, except it does show the dampers and all that. Uh, and then there's a subscreen of the alarms to be able to change the alarm delays. Uh, the gas monitor will show the all the three set up slightly different than the main. Uh, we have miscellaneous alarms, those would basically power, communication, intrusion, and also the analog alarm delays. Uh, and then we have a general site one for the that would be a summary as well as the generator status and power status. PLC2 uh, has an overview screen as well, the each individual pump, and then uh, level set points, uh, and then your 
your uh, control set points and pump set points and your alarms. Additionally, we'll, at the end, we'll try to talk about how did the pump start, what happens when it starts, did it, why did it stop, what are the different reasons, uh, why did PLC2 take over, how do I get it back, how do I get PLC1 back in control. Uh, and then why are there uh, four levels, two at PLC1, two at PLC2, uh, how does the HVAC operate, how do I clear an alarm, and then uh, we we'll probably ha you have further questions on the operator interface because it's going to look different than what you're used to at SCADA. Okay, so here's an expansion. We do have three pumps can run at the same time. I, I want to. I know there's been a lot of understanding that only two can run. All three could. We do not expect ever to run more than two just because these pumps are a lot bigger than previously and they should be able to handle the capacity. There is a restriction though, if you're on generator power, only two pumps can run. So there is a restriction if you are on generator, but under normal control, uh, you know, you would be able to run all three. Yes? Chris, um, when we were starting to put up a lift station with the generator, we were in multiple situations with a, situa uh, a pump starting. I don't know if you recall that. Okay. Now, um, and then when we went back to uh, when we went back to Edison, we had multiple situations again. Is that the same problem we're going to have at Mount Claire? Okay. So at, at um, what we've tested, we were able to test at Mount Claire. We had no problem starting the pumps. Uh, when we lose uh, power at Montclair, before the generator will start right away, there is a, a built-in delay to allow the VFDs to completely power off. So you're going to be sitting there, you know, if you're there for the power shortage, you mean know, why isn't the pump starting? <laughs> it's because what's happening is we're, we have to make sure all the capacitors go down so we avoid that problem. So we, once the powers on the VFDs are completely off, then it will switch over to generate, you know, ATS emergency power, and the pumps will turn back on. At that point, uh, we were able to start two pumps without an issue. It did not kick off the second, didn't cause any fault. Uh, the same thing happens when normal power returns. The ATS, I, I don't remember the exact time, but I think it's a five to 10 minute valid power before it switches back to normal but it doesn't switch instantly, it also powers off to make sure that the VFDs and then it resumes. So we, we do have that, we don't have the, we shouldn't have the same issues. Um, we don't have a soft starter that's gonna overpower and drain the generator like we did. The pumps will back up, so if, you, if the order was one, then two, then three, if pump one is not op available, it'll automatically go to two and if two pumps are required, two and three uh, will be started. If pump one becomes available, one will start and three will drop kind of at the same time, if that's the order. If it's in uh, auto rotation, you know, which would basically uh, it, it will do two then three. When one becomes available, it's automatically the third pump. We don't stop it. That's probably the, the situation you should leave it on just so that we get even run time. Uh, they're all the same pump, all the same VFD, so there's no performance, there shouldn't be any performance issue. Uh, I know with uh, Philadelphia you've got a, two different types of VFDs, so you, you, you prefer I think pump two where it's positioned to always run as the lead. At Montclair there should not be an issue unless there's any a problem with the PL pump. So with the uh, pump two controls, uh, I'm sorry, PLC two controls, those are going to be based solely on level, you know, kind of which makes a lot more sense uh, because we don't have a speed to change. They come on. That speed is set at the VFD. I believe currently we have it at 55 hertz because fit two pumps at 50 was e wasn't enough. To you know, that was essentially one pump at 100 at 60 hertz uh, when we were testing. So we wanted to make sure if PLC2 actually did take over, that it's going to actually 
move a lot more water than PLC one was for whatever reason. Uh, but we didn't want it to be a hundred percent because then you're going to cycle a pump constantly. You know, turn it on and turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. So we wanted to have not quite a hundred percent, but so we we've, we've got it around 55 hertz. Let's see, we did cover a lot of. Uh, so we're jumping down to page. Looks like nine. So the first picture you come across. Yeah, I, <laughs> we skipped all the text because I covered that early. <laughs> Here's your overview screen. Um, as you'll notice on the far left, we've got uh, our level. Then we, you know, draining the wet well. We've got three pumps. Here we've got pump three running. Uh, you've got a three flow transmitter. Uh, and here we've got uh, pump one's the 2800 in this case. And then you have your discharge pressure. Uh, this pressure is really low compared to what you expect because it's you know, a higher than where the pumps are, and it's also a kind of a flat system, so we don't really generate that much pressure. Uh, you have, you can see here, we have a, an alarm for the PLC one temperature. Uh, that's because at that time this this uh, temperature was not installed, so that's a fail. But that's what your alarm is going to look like. You know, something bright that kind of like points your eye out right away. Uh, with pump one also had a failure at that time so you can kind of see oh something's not right um, your then you have your uh, chemical your uh, gas monitoring up there your oxygen hydrogen sulfide and combustible I put meth the methane formula up there uh, at the bottom here you've got your system total flow uh, as you can see, we don't subtract anything from anything else. Uh, next to where it says alarm list at the very top, that's where it's going to be your gas monitoring warning or your high, high level warning. Uh, and then to the right, you have a PLC2 status. Normally, it's going to be blue running. If for some reason PLC2 takes over, that's going to be a, a red and white flag. Okay, so if you press the pump button right here, this is the most common screen. It's got all your data that you, you record every day. Uh, the first part on the left is exactly the same. Uh, and then instead of having pressure, we put the system total flow right there for you, a little easier. And then we have the total, so you don't have to open up each pump to look at the total. It's all on the screen for you. Uh, we have the flow totals individually, and then down at the bottom, just above the alarm reset, you have your total flow. Uh, okay, to uh, what happens when you press uh, analog, in this case, the levels, uh, this is on the next page, you're gonna pop up, it's gonna allow you to select either the, the, le the biggest level um, the, the right level, you know, the level A, uh, the average, level B, or the lesser level. Under normal circumstances, you should always have the greatest level selected. That way you're protecting on a high level. Uh, if for some reason one of the sensors is going bad, or you're going to start working on one of the sensors, then you want to select the good sensor before. Uh, we, we did enable this so you, that would be the bottom part. Uh, you would be able to quickly look at the scale. These are 20, 0 to 28 uh, feet. Uh, and then th there's your high alarms at 13 and 14 and lows. Now these are values for these particular screenshots. These are from Philadelphia, just so that you're aware. So 13 and 14 is not <laughs> the high, high set point at, at Montclair. Uh, if you were to press the first tab here, uh, that would allow you to, ch to uh, actually what you would have to do is press the operator button, that's the lock button on the first screen. That would uh, highlight the O and it would say not program but operator mode and then you would be able to change this, any set points for the high alarms or high high alarms uh, and the dead band. Uh, try to make sure that it's back in program. It'll, it'll have a, 
blue O on, on the level on the, any screen that you look at. So it should stand out that it's not the same as any of the others. But what this allows you is to change a set point while you're at here instead of changing it through SCADA. Uh, if you press the alarm button here, that's going to tell you what alarms are active or did occur and have since cleared. Uh, if, they're, if, they've, if any alarm needs acknowledging, you'd be able to press the individual check mark or down here at the bottom the uh, check all for that particular instrumentation. We have a trend that's built into these, but it doesn't start until you open the trend. So you can't go back and look five hours ago or anything like that. Uh, we do have you do have trends at SCADA that you should be able to see that. But if you're going to be there and you kind of want to watch it, it's a real primitive. Uh, obviously, it doesn't last that long. The big difference if you open up, uh, you know, for example, a flow, something that's not uh, you know, the, the level, you notice you don't have any selector at the bottom of this uh, on the right portion. That, again, that's because you only have a single signal, so there's no, no need to choose, do I want A, do I want B, the average, the greater. That's only for the level. But everything else would look exactly the same. You can press the uh, help button at any time. So that's going to look like uh, this question mark up here. That help button will tell you what these weird symbols that you're not used to if you ever have any questions. Uh, right here, you know, uh, on your mode indicator, that's your operator mode. That that's shows up and that's what you had to use to change the set points. It's also how you put the pumps in manual to be able to control the pumps in manual. It'll show up on the screen as a O as well when you look at the symbols. They'll be in the lower right corner. So that O, if you forget what it is, you would be able to press whatever object you're on, press the help button, and it'll pop up right here. Uh, there's another help button under here, you know, under the modes, and it brings up this question, which kind of tries to show you a summary. I think it's more confusing, but <laughs> this is all built into Alan Bradley and it will tell you you're either in program or operator. Uh, we don't use any locked modes uh, so, and uh, the only other mode would be your hand that that would be common. And that would be if, the, if you take the HOA at the VFD and put it in the hand, then you'll see a H that's displayed. Actually, I'm going to go back to the pump screen here. Uh, you see this little stop sign? That says uh, there's an interlock that's preventing pump one from being running. You would be able to get to that, and I'll, I'll show that a little later, but I wanted to point it out a difference between pumps two and three and one on this screen. That just says pump one is not available. It could be uh, the, it's in the HOA is in the off position. We know it's not in the hand, otherwise there'd be an H. Uh, there could be a high pressure switch, but then it would be an alarm associated with it. In this case, uh, the HOA was in off. Uh, this was before pump was it, one was installed, so there was no signal coming. And this is some more help uh, that, that again pops up. You get, we're welcome to press any of these. Uh, these are the different icons with all the alarms. You know, is it at the high, high, the high, the low, or the low, low? Is it a kind of a transducer fail, meaning the signal's lost? Or is there no active alarms, but there was one and nobody's acknowledged it? So these alarm bells, they do have symbols. If you see a red one, that does mean there's an active alarm. If there's a gray one, you know one came and went. Uh, and again, here's your big button. Uh, if, if you see an alarm, you can always press the acknowledge all. Okay, so here's, uh, when you press a pump object, here's what pops up. These are VFDs. So again, up here you have your uh, operator mode. If you want to put it into hand, if you want to run it at a fixed speed instead of using the PID, uh, you would be able to do this. Keep in mind, the PID will still calculate, uh, and if it gets to 100 
you know, the start set point for the second or third pump, it will call another pump. It doesn't prevent the PID from running, it, but it does keep the pump. So if you wanted to bump a motor while the main one, you know, you would come to this screen, you would open that, then you would, this would become enabled. This is your start button, just like on a VCR, DVR, DVD. <laughs> uh, and this is your stop button if you wanted to stop the pump. Uh, in this case, we have a giant interlock that's on this pump, the big stop sign. You can press this button and it'll tell you what's wrong with the pump. We'll see that in just a moment. Uh, this is your runtime. It's supposed to look like uh, you know the, the odometer oh. on a on the pump or a, in your in your car. When you open this, that'll tell you the runtime. But again, I've displayed this on the pump screen so you guys don't have to keep pressing multiple buttons. When you are running, you would be able to enter the speed here. So this would be we. We have percent here, but on the VFD it displays it in, in hertz. So this is a, a, an example of what the interlock was. Uh, and again, uh, we do not have a force main. This is an example from uh, Philadelphia. But what we do have is we do have a generator restriction. So that means if two pumps are running and you try to open up the third pump and try to run it, it won't be available and it'll have a, a big yellow like this and it'll say generator restriction. Uh, we do have an auto, we have a failure, and then we have level alarms. So the rest of that is, is correct. Uh, here's an example of what the run times would like, look like. Keep in mind, if you press now this button, your run times will reset. So you want to be careful not to, you know, and, and to avoid people from opening these screens we do display. We have the uh, maximum time for a single run time. In the beginning, we were running for 30 minutes on, 30 minutes, you know, two hours off while we had uh, diversion. Now that we don't have diversion, I think our run, our maximum run time for a single run is uh, close to 20 hours or 18. Uh, this is your total time that you've been running since the last time this reset was done. And then this is the number of starts we've done. A lot of these screens, uh, to be honest, the, you know, have already been set. Uh, there's no need to go in through here. I just I provide them just so that you guys know what you look like. You're going to keep to the home page and you're going to you know really look at those. There's no all these are uh, most of these are actually even hard coded in the PLC and you couldn't change these if you if you wanted to. Uh, but we do have uh, how long we want to keep the reset on. Uh, we do have fail to start. How long that delay is? That's set at 10 seconds. Uh, and then we have our min and max for our speed, but it, this one is set for sure. Okay, uh, we do have alarms that are tied into here. Uh, the only one that's really going to be valid is failed to start because our fault, we have a different alarm that pops up. And, and again, these are your, all your different helps. So if you see an H or an O, then you realize that you're not in program mode, that that pump is not going to call when it's supposed to be called. Uh, if you see that stop sign, it's not ready. Um, if you see, uh, and those are really the only common ones. Uh, the only other thing to realize, when PLC1 is in control, PLC2 expects all pumps to be stopped. So when a pump is running, because it's not calling it, it's going to say blue and stopping. Uh, that's normal because the other PLC is actually controlling. So if PLC 2 were in control, all the pumps would be that are running are going to be blue at PLC 1 instead of white. Okay, here's what an individual pump screen is going to look like. Th these are the data that we're going to have for you. And then these are the alarms that you would be able to change. Uh, your restart delay, there was a restriction of 20 starts an hour, so we've got a three-minute restart. So whenever pump 
stops, there's three minutes before it's going to start again. Your big one is going to be the set points. These are the actual set points that are there right now. We are trying to maintain exactly five feet. We start at 5.2 and we finish at 4.5. Obviously that's not a lot of room. You know, that's less than a foot that we're operating in. It does take a while to, to bring it down. And uh, uh, one of the things though that keep in mind when you first start, there's a, a little dip. So we can't shorten this up much more or we'll, or we'll trigger the uh, stop set point fairly quickly. Uh, what that is is basically filling the pipe you know and it causes a little wave uh, we do have a lot more waves whenever a pump starts and stops at uh, at this place than we do at Philadelphia it's just a very small wet well and uh, you've got kind of a flat pipe coming in and going out um, we do start at 98 percent so the PID is going to speed up as the level speeds up and it's going to continue to speed up uh, when it reaches 98% for, for five minutes, we're going to call the second pump. At that point, we're going to start at, uh, set, we're going to go back down to 78%. So that's one pump at 100 at 98 is roughly two pumps at 78. And then it's going to start ramping up again. If uh, you ever reach uh, 100% and your level is above 6.2, then we're going to start the third pump. Uh, we really don't expect three pumps to run, and again, if we're on generator, we won't ever. But if we're on normal power, we could run. <laughs>